as we can all agree on some level, third-party libraries can sometimes make or break a programming language in terms of getting enough traction for that programming language in the industry. Even though Go's standard libraries and packages technically pretty much has everything we'll need, the libraries I'll be talking about in today's video will make your life as a Go developer so much easier. So let's get right into it. Yo! Some ninjas, welcome back to the Golang Dojo, your number one resource for all things Go. Make sure to get your free Golang cheat sheet at golangdojo.com slash cheat sheet. The first library we will talk about is Gorm. Gorm is a ORM library for Go. Now, what is ORM? ORM stands for Object Relational Mapping. It is a technique for converting data between incompatible type systems. And GORM in particular is typically used for converting types between a database types and Go types. Now, normally, if you are trying to convert data between a database type and a Go native type, you would have to write your own SQL query and then convert the uh, database record that you're getting back manually into a Go native type. But with a GORM, you can now save a very large portion of the trouble. You can do things like inserting a record into the database and updating a record in the database with only a couple lines of instruction rather than a whole block of code. Unfortunately, all that convenience does not come to you without a cost. For example, performance is not nearly as good as you would get if you were writing your raw SQL queries. So if you are working on a project with a very tight performance requirement, Guam is likely not the library for you. Otherwise, Guam does come in handy in terms of simplifying the program that you are developing. A quick note, if you want me to make a tutorial on any of the libraries that I've mentioned in today's video, please let me know in the comments. If there's enough of you on the same library, I'll make that as the priority on my very next video. Next, we've got Testify, which is a toolkit, a testing toolkit for common assertions in mocks. Now, without a testify or assertions in general, we would have to use if statements in order to assert whether we are getting the right response back in our test cases. With the assert package in testify, we can now start writing the typical assert instructions like equals, not equals, and new in Go again. Now, this does bring us back to the more traditional way of writing tests in other languages, which may not be what the Go creators had envisioned originally. But some may argue that who's writing these test cases anyway? So as long as it compiles, right? On top of that, it does have over 15,000 stars on your GitHub. So it at least it gives you some level of a peace of mind. Next, we've got Zap by Uber, which is a very handy logging library in Go. Now, there's a couple appealing factors in using Zap rather than the native log package or any other third-party log packages. First of all, you have all of these leveled login that come with the package so that you don't have to write your own info one error implementations. Second of all, it is advertising itself as one of the most performant options out there and have all of these data points to back it up. On top of that, Zap is another package that has over 15,000 stars on GitHub. Next, we've got a CLI by your fave, which is a simple, fast, and fun package for building command line apps in Go, and it has over 17,000 stars on the GitHub. With this library, you can now start creating, instantiating, and running these CLI applications. For example, here you've created an application called Greet. And by building the binary here, you can start using that application by executing that binary. Last but not least, of course, we can't wrap up this video titled Go Libraries That You Must Learn without a mentioning of this OG library of Gorilla Web Toolkit in the Go. Only two of the most well-known packages in this toolkit already have over 30,000 stars collectively on the GitHub. 
First of all, we have the Monks package in the Gorilla Web Toolkit, which allows us to register URL paths and handlers with ease in Go. Now, to be fair, Go does come with a very extensive HTTP package natively, which consists of nearly, if not entirely, all we need in order to start writing sophisticated APIs in Go. However, one major complaint is that the native request multiplexer is not the most user-friendly. And this is where the Mux package in Gorilla bridges the gaps. Now, I've made videos on using the native multiplexer as well as using the request router in a framework like Go Fiber. However, I haven't made one uh, with Gorilla Mux. If that's something that you're interested in, make sure to let me know in the comment section down below. Now, of course, this is by no means an exhaustive list of libraries available for Go, but a few that I keep on hearing about over and over and over again. If I've missed any of your favorites, make sure to let me know in the comments. Perhaps I would be able to make a part two of this video. That said, make sure to like this video, subscribe to the channel, and get your free, yes, free, Golang cheat sheets at golangdojo.com slash cheat sheets. And I'll see you ninjas in the next video.